Hello and welcome to this week's techniques video and we are finished with our color series which kept us busy for a really long time and before we head into some other topics I thought we would revisit graphite. Um, we have many new patrons here since we had our um, graphite lessons and I have not seen a lot of graphite work from you all or like any comments on older videos or anything like that so I thought it would be nice to sort of reintroduce it and get you going on at least one graphite project to keep that fresh. Um, I know that many people really like to focus on color. You know, color is such a wonderful, seductive thing, right? And we really want to use color. Um, but graphite work has its own place in our creative practice, especially as a seeing drawing practice, which is vital to your ability to transfer what's in your head and what's in your heart onto paper. It teaches us how to see whether we're seeing something physical in the real world or where, whether we're seeing something in our mind's eye. It teaches us how to put things onto paper. So our hands and our minds work together or our hands and our eyes work together. Okay. So graphite work is hugely important. It's also incredibly satisfying, right? And a lot of times, even for our watercolor work, we need to do graphite work first. Correct? I mean, so we can get our drawings down on paper. So it's super, super important. If you have my book, Look Closer, Draw Better, there are many, many graphite um, lessons in that book. And if you go through them step by step, it is a really complete way to understand the application of graphite and, and how we can use it in our drawings. So I, you know, if you don't have the book, or if you just want a simple sort of refresher, that's what we're going to do today. All right, and I thought um, I would start by going through my little drawing box. This is my portable drawing box and the one I take when I do demonstrations and things like that. And I just wanted to unpack it for you so you could see. I also have a pen in there. <laughs> um, so I have a few things in here. And I'm going to unpack it and just talk about them. And th this is all we need for graphite practice, including um, paper, right? And we don't even need this much, to be honest with you. So there's a few things in here. The most important thing for graphite practice is our pencils, correct? So we have, I have a wide variety of pencils here. However, I really only need one to be honest with you. I really only need one pencil, and that is an HB, or as I prefer to use, an F, okay? This is actually my favorite brand of F pencils. It's by General Pencil Company. It's a Kimberly pencil. Um, I just love them. I don't know why. Um, I've just always loved them. I've ordered them boxes of 12. So this is the pencil I use most often. Um, it is an HB lead. It's called an F because it's supposed to be a little bit thinner than an HB lead, all right? I don't know if that's true. I mean, I compare them, and yeah, it's a little thinner, but it's not noticeable. But I don't know. I just like these. So this is the only pencil you really need. And to be honest with you, you don't even really need something this fancy. You could also use... Something like a Ticonderoga pencil, which are available at every single drugstore or grocery store in the country, I'm positive. This is the black version. They also come in a natural wood or a yellow pencil. This is an HB lead or a number two pencil, okay? And here is another number two pencil, just a basic, probably Office Max or something, number two pencil. What we're not going to use on these pencils is the erasers. The erasers are useless. Don't even think about them, okay? Chew on them or something, but don't use them on your paper. But we can use these pencils. They're perfectly acceptable. In fact, Andrew Wyeth, the great artist, only used number two pencils from the hardware store in his work, okay? So there you go. You have permission to just use a basic number two pencil. 
Now, there are some other pencils here. And you know, I change my mind every now and then about them. Um, in the book, I, I talk about, I think, four or five that are really useful to have. I have a lot of pencils, you know, so I change my mind sometimes. But here's a, here's a, I, I definitely want to have a hard pencil. So pencils have either an H or a B next to their number. The higher the number with an H means the harder the pencil. So the harder the line, the paler the line, the lighter the line, the harder it is to erase, the more it can dig into your paper. But um, it also gives us a very delicate line that um, is hard to get with a softer pencil. Okay, so I always have like a 4H in, in my toolbox. So that's one. You can even have a 2H. Here's a 3H, you know, but anything I would say 4, 3, 2, you, you'll be fine. I, I like 4. And then I also have a pencil, and of course I have my HB pencil, and then I also have usually a B or a 2B, most often a 2B, and I don't know why I have a B in here, but it's what I have. So I like a 2B because it's a little bit softer, a um, little bit softer than an HB. B is very close to an HB. So the, the higher the number with a B after it, the softer or the blacker the line, right? So when you go all the way up to something like an 8B, it's going to be the darkest line that graphite can make, okay? So I usually have, you know, like a 2B and a 6B or a 2B and a 5B or something like that. So you just want to make sure you have your HB and then a pencil that's a little bit harder and a pencil that's a little bit softer, for darker lines, all right? And that's really all you need. And like I said, you can get away with just HB. You're just not gonna get the huge range of values, and you're going to have to be a little bit more delicate when you need fine, um, you know, softer color, and you're gonna have to go over it a few more times when you want darker. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. Um, after we talk about the supply. So you'll also see I have a couple erasers here. A kneaded eraser is a must. You have to have that. This is a white eraser. Sometimes helpful, but can be rough on paper. A kneaded er eraser is my favorite. I also have a stick eraser that I can sharpen to a fine point. These are no longer available. They are discontinued, so you're not going to find these, but there are other brands that you can look at. Um, Tombow Mono Zero is a good one. You know, um, you can take a razor blade and, and ch chisel off the end so you have a really fine point. Okay? So, definitely a kneaded eraser, which you can also get pretty fine lines with. And some kind of eraser, like a stick eraser, that you can sharpen to a, a fine chisel point if you need to. Um, you'll also notice that my pencils have really, really long points on them. Do you see that? That is for a very particular reason, and it allows me to have more pencil surface on the paper if I want to do shading, and it forces me to have a lighter touch because if I press too hard, it's going to break, okay? We're gonna talk about that in a minute too. So I use an X-Acto knife to sharpen my pencil. However, you have to be really, really careful when you do this, and if you are at all hesitant about using an X-Acto knife, I would not do it. I would get yourself a really good pencil sharpener and just stick with it. I always have a pencil sharpener with me. I like these brass bullets, these kinds. I also use them to sharpen my eraser, okay? But if you're going to do this, you always want to make sure the blade, and you have a really sharp blade, okay? You always want to make sure that you're moving it away from you and that you are always aware of where it is. So if I'm going to sharpen this pencil, I'm going to put it down on the pencil and I'm just going to whittle away the wood. I go very slowly. I've seen artists that go really, really fast and I just don't think it's a good idea. Um, I think you have to be careful because I have worked in a graphic design department before where I've seen people cut off the ends of their fingers by carelessly using X-Acto knives, not having respect for the blade. So if I go slowly and I use control, it's perfectly safe, right?
but I take no responsibility. <laughs> so you either have to be comfortable with it or you're not. And um, yeah, that's all I can say. There are probably a million YouTube videos on how to sharpen a pencil with an X-Acto knife. You can certainly watch them. Um, but this is how I do it. And, my, and most of my students here in the, my local studio do it this way as well. So once I have a lot of the wood, and I usually don't go farther than this, that's about not quite an inch, I take a sanding block and I very lightly roll my pencil around using hardly any pressure. It's just flat, softly pressed onto the sandpaper. And I am just very, very lightly moving it around to get a very fine point. So, Physics somehow gives you this long conical shape, right? So you get, it gets fine at the bottom and it's a little thicker at the top. I'm, I'm not pressing my pencil at all. Now you'll notice that you get graphite dust and you can save this. Okay, um, I have a little jar somewhere. I don't know where it is right now. But when I sharpen a bunch of pencils, I save the graphite dust and just sort of tap it into a jar and save it in case I need it for um, to shade. Sometimes I do that with a brush. Okay, so that's how I sharpen my pencils. It's, it's messy, um, a little scary for some people. If it scares you at all, do not do it. Okay, so I have a sharp pencil. I have a couple other things to talk about. This is a tortillon. Um, I use them very rarely um, to, to blend large areas in direction of form and with a very soft touch. The longer I draw, the more experienced I get with a light touch, the less I need to rely on this. I can do it mostly with my pencil or a harder pencil. And then I keep a white chalk pencil just in case. I need a little highlight here or there where I've missed something. So that's my drawing kit. It's pretty simple. You'll also notice that I have a tint of art graph. It is not necessary. I use it for fun sometimes. Um, it's, uh, they say that it's erasable. It truly is not. Um, yeah, so it's just for fun. It has nothing to do with my drawing practice. Okay, so I'm going to grab here some paper. And this is um, my favorite drawing paper. And it is a little bit more expensive, but it's worth it. Um, if you get a 9 by 12 sheet, a, a pad of Stonehenge, either warm white or white, um, you just, you can't go wrong with it. The texture of it's perfect for graphite. It's also perfect for charcoal. It's, you can also use watercolor wash on it. Pen and ink does really well on this paper. Um, so I, I wouldn't hesitate to get a pad. Um, it's, it'll last you a long time. And you don't need to just use it for one little thing and then tear it off. Use it and fill up the whole page with studies. You know, this is just for practice. But when we use inferior paper, we're going to feel it because things aren't going to erase well, things aren't going to blend well, and you're going to be frustrated. So Stonehenge is my favorite. There are some other ones. Strathmore 500 um, mixed media paper is also wonderful for drawing. So um, see which one fits more in your budget. Um, you can get them at different prices or on sale at different times. But between those two, I'm set. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is pencil pressure on the paper. And many of you have heard this already, but many of you haven't. And what I like to think about it as is an angel kiss, all right? I, when I put my pencil to paper, I am not digging in and I'm using my pencil on the side. If I'm going into fine detail, I might hold it more like a pencil, but I'm still barely grazing this paper. That means if I want to go back and erase, my pencil is going to erase very easily. If I go in and use it harder, oops, see, and I broke my pencil. That's one of the reasons why I use such a long point because I have to use a delicate touch. But if I go in and I use a harder touch, you see how hard it is to erase? You don't want that. It's actually digging a groove into the paper, okay? So by using a softer touch and barely grazing the paper with our graphite, 
what we're doing is we're leaving room to erase and we're also creating the beautiful texture of the paper shining through our work. So Stonehenge has a very specific texture. And if I'm really good about having a light touch over and over and over again, you're going to always see that texture of the paper shining through. Now let me get another kind of paper. So this paper is by Arches. It's one of my favorite papers for charcoal. And I just want to show you the difference. So if I'm using a pencil with a really light touch, I'm going to use this one so you can see it a little bit better. And I'm just grazing the surface of the paper. I'm, I, I'm using that angel kiss or angel feather, just really, really light touch. I'm not digging my pencil in. What you're going to start to notice is a very distinct texture on this paper. And it's called a laid texture, and it has lines in it, okay, which can be really beautiful um, for certain effects that we want to achieve. So I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to hold it up so you can see it a little better. I was hoping this pencil would show up better than an HB. But you see, I can go over and over and over and it, over again, and I can make it darker, but I'm still maintaining the texture of the paper shining through. This is a very beautiful thing, and this is what we want. Do you see that texture? You see. I don't know where I am. Hopefully you can see that. Okay? Let me show you the work. So this is the work of Seurat, Georges Seurat. He was a French artist. He's mostly known for pointillism um, in his oil paintings. But he did a lot of um, drawings with Conti and pencil and charcoal. And you can see he used a very, very textured paper, very much like this one, a laid surface. Do you see the delicateness of his shading and how you can always see that texture of the paper shining through? Okay, this is something to study. He did it correctly. His drawings, when you see them, look like they are lit from within. They are absolutely exquisite because they, cap they hold the light of the paper. All right, it's not unlike in watercolor where we don't want to disguise our paper or cover it up completely because we want that light of the paper to shine through. So even though I've used a very light touch here, I can go on with a darker pencil and go over it. I'm sorry, that's a harder pencil. Where's my darker one? There we go. I can go over it with a darker pencil and still use this really light touch. And I can make it darker so I get more shadow right, or shading, but I can still see the white of the paper shining through. And this is why we use darker, softer leads or harder, lighter leads, okay? See how I can go back and forth and back and forth and I get darker and darker and darker, but I never lose that texture of the paper. That is what I want you to practice, always, when you're doing your work, all right? The other thing this stops us from doing is creating flashback with our graphite because if I were to go on here and get really heavy handed with it and want to just fill this in so it's just black, which I gotta be really careful because I'm not used to pressing this hard. See how I'm filling it all in and now it's gonna start to look waxy and shiny. Okay. And you, I don't know if you can see it, but instead of, of looking darker, I get flashback. The graphite sends, reflects light back at me, all right? Instead, I can use circular motions and gradually build layers without destroying the light of the paper. 
and just go back and forth a few times. I'm going very, very lightly and I can get it pretty dark, all right? If you ever need to use something darker than this, what I do is I use charcoal because charcoal doesn't have a flashback. And so, let me see if I have a charcoal pencil here. I don't. Sure, okay. So, if I ever need to have like a really dark area, I can use charcoal and skim it over the paper in the same way. And I'm still getting the light of the paper coming through, but I can get even darker without that flashback. So I do keep a charcoal pencil around, even if I need like a really fine line, you know, some like with, with a line weight that's very, very dark, I can use a charcoal pencil instead of graphite. Graphite will only go so dark, okay? So if you're in need of this darkest, darkest value, I use charcoal or sometimes a carbon pencil too. So it's really important that you learn this, this technique, okay? So I want, you, I want you to basically get out paper and pencil and I want you to maybe draw a square. And just practice filling in the square with the very lightest touch you, you can. So, you know, you're just skimming the pencil over the top. You're maintaining the texture of that paper shining through. Again, Stonehenge has a really refined texture. It's absolutely beautiful. And you don't have to stay in one line or anything. You can... You can move around and and you'll notice that I haven't drawn in a while, so you'll you'll notice that um, the longer you do it, the easier it becomes. And then once I would have this completely filled in, I might go over it a second time in another direction, just really, really softly. Filling this in. Try it with an HB pencil, then try it with a harder pencil and a softer pencil and see what you get. See how dark you can make your HB without losing the texture of the paper. So I'm going over it a second time and then maybe I go over it a third time, changing directions again. Very, very soft third time. You see how it's getting darker, but I'm not losing that beautiful texture of my paper. See that? And I can even go over it one more time. I'm still maintaining that texture. I can go over it over and over and over and over it. And as long as I'm grazing the paper, I can make an HB pencil really, really dark, right? Without losing that texture of the paper. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why I got bigger there. See that? Okay, so that's what I want you to do. I want you to get out your pencils again and get familiar, get them nice and sharp, whether you're using a crank sharpener or a hand sharpener or whatever it is, just make sure it's sharp. If you're using a sharpener like this, this is a long point sharpener. Okay, so it's going to actually make it a little bit longer than most. Um, you can see I sharpened this graphite, uh, this charcoal pencil. You see the long point? So these are, you can buy long point sharpeners like this. You're just gonna have to do it a little more frequently. And what I've always done is I just keep a bowl nearby and I just keep my um, sharpener in the bowl and I just do it over the bowl and just collect the shavings in there. And then every now and then I'll, I'll dump it. Um, so it's really, really important to keep your pencils sharp no matter how you sharpen them. It's gonna make an enormous difference on the quality of your line and your shading. Um, we'll talk about line weight um, next time. I just, I really want you to, to get familiar again with your pencils, get your pencils out, and just do 
some simple shading exercises like this to see how dark you can make each of your pencils, how light and how dark without hiding that white of the paper. Super, super important. Um, then if you want to, you can see I, I started to draw um, this. <laughs> um, so you, you can also find something in nature and then just try to, to get it down on paper very gently just by using these shading techniques, you know, and just seeing how light. But you can see I've, I've only used one pencil here and I've just gone over it in parts, you know, over and over again to make the shading, right? And I'm never losing that white of the paper. And it makes a big difference. It gives our drawings a luminosity and a presence and a delicateness um, that's rare in drawings these days. People tend to be too heavy handed with their graphite. And, and for, from my taste anyways. So I'm, this is just one way, it's just my way. But a lot of people, you know, make note of the delicacy of my drawings and, and this is the key to that, all right? All right, everybody, that's it for today. I hope this was helpful. I know it's sort of a review for some of you, but it's it's never a bad idea to have a review. And maybe you haven't taken your pencils out in a while and you, you might just need to get going again so we can um, do a graphite project, all right? Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you again very soon.